you'd say, John, what's the most important thing in your marriage? It's my value system. My value system is never ever to hurt my partner in any way. Most men don't realize the way they hurt their partners, but we do unknowingly. And so this is the whole idea is realizing to create a freedom of expression for women. But at the same time, there's an appropriateness to how women need to express themselves. You can't just, you know, say whatever's going on inside of you in any situation. You find the appropriate time, the appropriate place. You know, if you want to complain about your husband, go, <laughs> go talk to a girlfriend who will go, yes, my husband too. You know, you'll get right. that. And, and go to a good therapist, a Mars Venus coach, for example, go to them and they'll explain, they'll hear you. And then they'll say, okay, now what's another way you could communicate that to your partner? How can you ask for what you want? You know, what is it you're needing? And how can you ask for that? Now you've vented out your feelings, your estrogen levels are up. Now let's go to your testosterone side and solve the problem, what you can do about it. So this is, you know, it's handling both sides, but always with women, the importance of being able to express and share what's inside of her is, ess is the essence of how to come back to your female side. And I know that's a big question that women ask you, Michelle, is that, you know, how do I get back to my female side? You know, I want to find mm -hmm. that soft, loving part of me. It's like, no man is good enough for me. I seem to be picky about all these things. You know, what is it? I said, that's being too far on your male side or that feeling of being overwhelmed and stressed. How to come back to your female side, these biohacks, asking your partner support and getting the reassurance exercise. And you could start with doing it twice a week. Uh, and, and you can say to your partner, if I'm not doing it enough, then you can say, let's do the reassurance exercise and then I'll do it. Because my experience is, ironically, all men are willing to do this and women are the ones who don't do it. Uh, and, and I can understand that too, because it's scary. It's scary. I, I, it's emotionally vulnerable. What I'm hearing a lot of, it's it's emotionally vulnerable for a woman to ask for that reassurance. And And I think this is, something that probably a lot of men don't understand how important that is for a woman because they're like, well, I told her once that I loved her and I already told her that I thought she was beautiful. Why does she need to ask me this again and again? And you just hit on something I forgot to say. So when you're setting this up with your partner, you say, I know you love me and I know you think I'm beautiful. That's why we got together. And I trust that but there's this part of me that's insecure. So you'd have to embrace, there's a part of me that's insecure and you can fix that for me. You can help me. Again, so this is a way you could help me. It'll only take two minutes. Would you like to know what it is? She says, okay, okay. And even if he's a little silly about it, because anytime you're asking a man to do something new, a part of him feels like, I'm not doing enough now. He might even be aware of it, but he has to sort of lighten it up and, oh, okay, I'll try this thing. And that's how I felt when my wife, you know, when I realized women needed hugs, I didn't take it that seriously until I realized how it made her feel so good. And now it became a real thing for me. And I, I love giving hugs and I'm happy to do it. And I seek her out to do it. These are the keys, these little hacks, you know, to hack a computer is to get it to do what you want. So this is hacking your, your biology so that you can feel the loving feelings inside your heart. Mm hmm and I love the idea of like taking a break so that an argument doesn't or a disagreement doesn't escalate. And I think that's a really powerful thing for couples to have in their tool of arsenals too, because otherwise, if a man's mad, like you were saying, if he keeps talking about it when he's mad, he's going to get more upset. He's going to get more mad. Things are going to escalate. This whole idea of taking a break, as long as the woman knows that he's going to come back around yes, and that definitely. he's going to be willing to have that conversation with her and that she is going to have that opportunity to express her feelings. It's just we have to de-escalate so it doesn't go the other direction and blow but, up, right? Let, let's look at her side of it as well. He's going to come back to have the conversation, but it's she has to look at, okay, how am I communicating in a way which is triggering the worst part of my partner? And how can I sort of vent my feelings to somebody at that time or write them out, whatever, so I can sort of settle down. And then I look at what the problem was and I can make a request or I can let him know, communicate in a different way. Because we all, the closer you get to your partner, the easier it is to get bruised. It's like if you're dancing at a mm -hmm. distance, no problem. But when you're getting close, you can step on feet. That's just the the challenge of being in an intimate relationship, but the payoff is when you have your heart open, you can feel safety and trust. 
here you can have someone take you to the highest levels of of intimacy and happiness and for many people it would be the great the great joy of having fantastic sex and living a long life that's not for everybody some people can live a long life without fantastic sex i'm not judging that i'm just 72 years old so i didn't think it was going to be this great <laughs> it just gets better because you know when you're raising kids and you're really busy and all that you don't have enough time you know to have this time together so it can change and get better if and what i know to be the case is when couples are are making love there's so much more love in the relationship that the normal challenges are not so big. It's like you, you have mm. a bank account, you're filling up your bank account. So when you're paying your bills, you're not like going on empty. Uh, you, you've got an abundance of love and that's what making love can do. That's one of the tools that, that can do it. But I, you know, I know lots of women are listening and we're winding up now and they're probably thinking, yeah, but I don't have a relationship to try all this stuff out with. Uh, keep in mind that everything we're saying is a very powerful, if it relates to you in some way, you can apply it to your past relationships and see your own, see if only I had this, if only I did that, if I only stood this, we wouldn't have had so much trouble, okay, if there was trouble. That gives you more confidence that you can create a relationship now by looking at, gee, that relationship, it's often easy to see the other person's mistakes, not so easy to see our own, how we could have made it different, even though it might've been the wrong guy, okay, that's also the case. But having the confidence of seeing how I contribute to the problem, I say that good endings make good beginnings, which is if you're able to then realize you're part of the problem, not just them, you can find forgiveness and gratitude for the good things that were there. That opens the door for finding the right person for you now. It creates a, a kind of polarity that makes you more attractive and other men more attractive to you when you're feeling not like a victim. <laughs> 